Howdy. 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 I'm Sarah Fauche. I'm team leader for group number one, and this is our project number three, which is a Q&B analysis of Mission Ranch. And for Mission Ranch, it is located in Aggieland, and um, for the quadruple net value analysis, we will be touching on the economic, social, and cultural, environmental, and sensory value of Mission Ranch. For our team, we have our other team leader, William. We have for our social and cultural elements, Jared and Christian. And for our environmental elements, we have Carl and Christian. For our economic elements, we have Chris and Scott. And then for our sensory elements, we have Colin. So for the regional analysis, we're going to have Carl and William talking to you about that. All right, so this is just a map kind of showing, pointing out some of the amenities around the area. Uh, so here's Mission Ranch down at the bottom of the screen. Um, Easterwood Airport is, you know, less than two to three miles away. Uh, AM sports venues, Kyle Field, Reed Arena, all that. Northgate up at the top. Uh, and a golf course, HEB is less than a mile away from the development, and so is um, Consol High School, and Consolidated, and Wolf Pen Creek Park is about a 15, 20 minute drive depending on uh, traffic. So down over here you can see that uh, there's the location of Mission Ranch. Uh, Mission Ranch is located in South College Station. Uh, you can see right next to Mission Ranch there is that K-4 through school that's going to be River Bend Elementary School. Further south by the unincorporated or now annexed by College Station area of Wellborn, there is the 7 through 8 and the 5 through 6. That's the intermediate and the middle school down there. Um, that's about probably a 5, 10 minute drive, not too far away. Um, and then right there at the top, as mentioned before, that's a and Consolidated up there on Har Harvey Mitchell. Um, that's a 9 through 12 school. So basically, you can see Mission Ranch is kind of centrally located if you're going there with the family. Um, you're starting them in the K through four system, or K through twelve system. Um, you know, you're right there, located in the middle. You should be good to go with like commutes and things like that.
So for social cultural aspects, we decided to look at more College Station big picture rather than just centrally look at Mission Ranch because it's a developing neighborhood. At the moment, there's not much going on. Um, so, and people have cars, and College Station's a rather small town to be moving into. Um, so, some average numbers were the average age is, average age is 23, um, population about 116,000. Um, these numbers, um, the population fluctuates up and down depending on seasonal because of the um, high college population within the town because of Texas A&M. Um, and the age seems low also, again, because of the um, high college population. Um, population. Um, the race, 60% white, 7.5% um, African American, and 13.5% Hispanic Latino. Um, again, those numbers can fluctuate depending on time of year and where the college uh, population is. Average income, again, also seems rather low, below 40,000. Um, again, because most kids and people in the town are work not working or they're working lower end jobs because there's not um, many sal salary opportunities for like college kids. Um, number of homes, 42,896. Um, again, most of these are apartments, you know, duplexes, places for these college kids who move in and out of the city, depending on the time of year. Um, schools for Mission Ranch. Um, uh, some others that weren't listed in the video were a and Consolidated, uh, Bloom Junior College is close, and Texas A&M University. Um, so you, if you move into Mission Ranch, you actually do have opportunity to go to school from you know, K through 12 all the way through your graduate. Um, so shopping, we there's tons of shopping opportunities, and everything's really close. So we want I just covered a couple things that were from different spectrums of shopping. So you have H-E-B and Walmart for your groceries and whatever else household items you might need. Um, variety of clothing boutiques um, in the area. There's a, there's really two um, by the H-E-B off of Wellborn, less than a mile away, and a, a tractor supply about two miles away. And then airports, Easterwood Airport is about a mile away. And then also you have easy access to Hobby <coughs> Airport in Houston and Austin Airport. Um, eating as well, various fast food restaurants less than a mile away, two miles, C&J if you want a more sit down, and Fuzzy's Taco Shop um, allows you to have more of that bar scene if you'd like that. And um, we looked at the nearby cities, so you can see how centralized College Station is, so you can see five of the major cities in Texas are all within a three hour drive to make it a very easy commute to, you know, for work or go see family or anything like that, so. That was one thing that is really focused on, I mean, it's 180 miles to Dallas, 175 to Fort Worth, and Houston's an hour away, so very centralized location, very nice, makes it easy on game days coming into town. <coughs> and um, while there's not many events going on at Mission Ranch right now, there also are a lot going on at College Station, Brian, I mean, you saw Wolf Pink, Wolf Pink Creek, there's plenty of concerts going on there. Um, you've got the George Bush Library, which is very special to go see some history. And sporting events, of course. There's plenty of youth leagues to get involved with. You know, basketball, soccer, baseball, football. Um, First Friday in Bryan is a little further away, but it's still a nightlife thing. There's Northgate, and then there's Memorial Parks and other areas to go outside and enjoy nature. So, there's plenty of activity to do in the area. So next up for economic, we're going to have Chris and Scott talking to you. Howdy, so I'm Chris. I'm going to be talking about the economics of Mission Ranch. So one of the first things that we wanted to do when uh, tackling the economics of Mission Ranch, we wanted to get some figures so you can actually see how it stacks up uh, as a master plan community in relation to the other communities around us and to other communities alike. So one of the first things that we got was that the total cost for Mission Ranch was $17 <coughs> million. Uh, of that $17 million, there was an 8% design fee, uh, which was $1,360,000. Um, and obviously because of that, a big part of it, uh, that hasn't been built yet, obviously, when y'all go out there and y'all look at it, y'all can see that the amenity center hasn't been built yet, but they did. They do budget $6 million to build it, and it's a, they sell the, the homeowners on the fact that they're going to have this 
state-of-the-art, luxurious uh, amenity center. Um, so just to give you an idea of what, what it is that they're going to put in, you know, six million for an amenity center, it's definitely not going to be one that you find at your, um, your average apartment complex. Um, as far as the overall market value of it is, uh, they, they're valued at $23 million. Uh, obviously, this number will continue to increase as the addition of houses and if they acquire any more property or land. Um, in addition to the overall market value, uh, one thing that is worth mentioning as far as like uh, when you're dealing with the economics is the revenue that's generated. And uh, so the revenue that they generate comes through uh, the profit they make and the, and the commissions that they make off the houses that they sell. And I believe it said that from year to date they've sold around 30. And when we're looking at the numbers, I believe like any house can go from like, I know they start at 350,000, but like just to make them, it's like they can cost anywhere from like, if they start around like 250, they could sell them like for like double that. So if they're making double on a 250,000 home, um, if they're selling 500 and they sold 30 homes, just to give you an idea of what they've already made. Um, and another thing on top of that, for the, as far as when it grows in the addition of houses, uh, the occupancy rate is worth mentioning. And that obviously doesn't, it's not going to be like 70 or 80% consistently throughout the year, just because, uh, as Jared mentioned, throughout the seasons it's going to fluctuate. So during the fall, obviously, uh, beginning of school, football season, uh, we have two ring dunks during the fall, so we're going to see uh, occupancy rates higher during those times. Uh, and towards the end of the semester, so like end of the spring, beginning of the summer, we're going to see the occupancy rates go lower. But an overall trend of it, uh, we see it increasing. So it's just kind of increasing. Uh, it peaks in the fall and like kind of dies down in the begin or the end of the spring, beginning of the summer, and it's just kind of gradually making its way, uh, increasing overall. And then I'm going to leave uh, the next slide up to Scott. Uh, howdy, I'm Scott. We're going to be talking about how much it's going to cost you to live there. So starting out, it costs three hundred fifty thousand to buy a house, which on the lower end there, and it goes all the way up to around six hundred thousand. Then on the lot size, and who builds the house for you? Then you have custom house sites and patio houses, which I can't get a price on those because it just depends on how much you want to spend on the house. Then the homeowner association's annual due is thirteen hundred dollars a year, and that will cover your lawn services, your basic lawn services. And in the surrounding areas, you'll see that it's mostly apartment complexes for college students, not really a ton of housing for single families. But they usually range from four hundred and fifty upwards to twenty five hundred dollars a month, depending on what apartment complex you're staying at. And he's already Chris talked about the revenue generated. They've sold about thirty homes so far and that number's gonna to continue to increase and Make anywhere to 150,000 to 300,000 homes, depending on how much you're selling for. All right, so now we're going to have Carl and Christian go over uh, the environmental aspects of Mission Ranch. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, Mission Ranch is different from other living communities here in College Station because it incorporates the natural environment as its uh, competitive advantage uh, in the housing market. Uh, the reason behind this is Mission Ranch wants to act as an escape from the urban life of College Station and wants to take you away from the you know, hustle and bustle and just craziness that is student life in and around campus. Um, uh, as we know, uh, Mission Ranch has a number of busy roads outside and around, um, around the complex and as I've learned while driving through College Station, no matter how fast you go on that green light, the truck behind you does not think you're quick enough and will just wail on his horn. So to get, um, uh, to engulf the community members into this brand new natural environment, they actually took the uh, homes and other projects and pushed them further into the land to get away from all that um, noise and um, different things that will take away from the environment. Another thing Mission Ranch did very well um, to engulf their community members was the use of uh, mature trees, an abundance of green spaces, parkland, um, a variety of diverse plant life, and of course the uh, key uh, centerpiece of the lake. Uh, Mission Ranch goes as far as to actually take the utility units and hide them in plain sight with different uh, plant life just to maintain that, um, you know, that sense of like I'm in a completely different area of college station than where I uh, started. 
Um, another thing we found was uh, the only rain down the drain campaign, which is a citywide uh, campaign which is meant to deter from uh, polluting the water that goes into the storm drains. Um, you're actually awarded a plaque if once you go through the city college station, you go through an application process, and they actually get put on the storm drains. And it was nice to see that Mission Ranch had a couple of them in and around the area to um, really show that Mission Ranch is, uh, uh, finds it important to at least keep the environmental uh, lifestyle or the environmental life healthy uh, within the community. <coughs> All right, so once again, my name is Coral. So for Mission Ranch's connection to nature, uh, residents can enjoy a variety of outdoor activities, one of which being um, <coughs> walking or biking through their numerous bike uh, sidewalk trails. Um, and as mentioned in a, the group that went on Tuesday, there aren't a lot of uh, shady trees along the trail, so obviously that's going to affect, you know, especially the adult population, which is going to be the majority of people who are living here. But for children who live in the neighborhood, you know, I mean, you remember when you're a kid, you don't really care if it's hot outside, you're still going to go ride your bike with your friends on the sidewalk and stuff, so I think they'll still be used um, for their design purpose. Um, along with that, the central lake uh, in the center of the project offers a variety of activities as well, such as kayaking, canoeing, fishing, it has to be catch and release though, um, and no swimming in the lake, there's a bunch of water moccasins and stuff. Uh, and there's also a scenic picnic area, which is pictured right here. And that's just one of the grills and benches that they have. But they're scattered along uh, the perimeter of the lake, and they offer um, open green space. So if you're having a grill out with the family, you know, the kids have space to throw the ball or play tag or whatever. Um, and so if you're still wanting more outdoor activity other than that, there's numerous parks located around the area. So there's Wolf Pen Creek Park, Brothers Pond Park, and... Um, a few golf courses that are all a very <coughs> short drive away. And as far as um, environmental certifications, we couldn't find anything on their website that said that they are LEED certified, so it made us believe that they're not. Um, and now I'm going to pass it over to Colin for sensory. Hi, my name is Colin, and I did sensory. Um, Mission Ranch is visually appealing. As I was driving trying to find it, I was having a hard time, and as I was driving, I, I started to slow down. I see this monument approaching, and on the monument it says Mission Ranch. It has a huge water function. Um, and so I, I started slowing down, and I'm like craning my neck. It's like, okay, Mission Ranch, it evokes this sense in me. Like, I want to go in there, and I want to see what this community is about and what, what it has to offer. And so I take this ride, and I'm driving through Mission Ranch. The, the roads are open. The tr there's, there's trees. There's lighting for security. There's flowers. Uh, there's sidewalks to your right and to your left, and I just I feel at home. I feel good. And uh, as you continue to drive, you see a small pond on your right, and you keep driving. You start seeing houses. They're they're quiet. They're contemporary. They're nice. Um, and it makes you want to spend some time here. You continue to drive, and you you get hit with this massive uh, lake, and it just like really makes you feel like this is a community. This is somewhere you can spend your time. Um, next, uh, the senses that I was able to kind of get after sense of sight is smell and sound. And so yesterday I was driving through trying to just like, kind of just get an idea of what I was going to say. And I had my windows down at 70 degrees outside and you can just smell the outdoors, you can hear the birds. And it, just, it was just a nice, it was a pleasant, pleasant feel, it's a pleasant atmosphere. And uh, I think that's what Mission Ranch was going for, which is a quiet town where you could raise your family, where you could retire. Um, and that's, that's the sense I got from it. And next would be touch. They have areas open with part at the park by the lake with charcoal grills. They have benches. Uh, that way the community can come together and have like a grill out. You can be with your family out there. I think eventually Mission Ranch will uh, have community events held at that lake where they can have grills where you can meet your neighbors. And I think it really just trying to evoke the sense of community between it. And then the last sense would be touch and, I mean not touch, it would be taste. And so I wasn't able to taste anything, but across the street they have a gas station with snacks and they have very nice restrooms. So uh, <laughs> those are the, the five senses I was able to get when I went through Mission Ranch. So for the architects involved in Mission Ranch, obviously, um, they have a lot of them. It's actually kind of interesting for a master plan community. I hadn't had any experience with master plan communities, so I was interested to see that somewhere in College Station, as small as it is, that this many 
popular builders were coming in. I know David Weekly is really big in Austin and he sells some pretty big homes there. And we have Ravina and Omega. I checked out their website. It seems pretty significant. And Caldwell Homes and Blackstone Homes and Magruder Homes and then the Classic Homes by Marriott. All right, and so Sarah and I are going to go over just the final conclusions, and so Mission Ranch is for perfection. Okay, so for the recap of Mission Ranch, um, social cultural elements, uh, it's a new development, so there's not that much going on, obviously, but I have um, some confidence in it that it will probably be a pretty big deal coming in the next couple of years when College Station gets a little bit bigger more people graduate, more people need homes. And so for the environmental elements, uh, obviously for a pretty newly built community, it's pretty green and there's a lot of trees and grass and it seems pretty complete. It's not, um, the construction on the homes is kind of tucked away. So if you're buying a home while other homes are still being constructed, it's not too big of a mess. They have finished up the front of the Mission Ranch, they finished the lake part of it, and they have trails all around there, which are really nice. And then for the economic elements, um, obviously property taxes in College Station are kind of on the median grounds. So they're not, obviously property taxes aren't low here, but they aren't too high for what you're getting. And the home values are pretty, they're pretty comfortable for College Station. They're not too high, they're not too low either. And then um, for the sensory elements, obviously it it's a new community, so it's still getting in the flow of having some sensory elements in there. All right, and so our recommendations to Mission Ranch, once again, uh, Mission Ranch is a pretty strong development overall. Um, just some small issues, like for that target demographic, they're doing a great job. Um, some issues that we found would be the sidewalks and curbs. So for example, in the neighborhoods there, they're kind of like different little communities separated by those main arterial roads or collector roads. Um, you find that in a couple of them, or at least one of them, that there's no sidewalk connecting them to the rest of the amenities. So basically, if you lived in that little area, you couldn't access that um, by walking. You'd have to drive or you'd have to walk on the street. And then speaking of the street, uh, many of the streets do not have curbs. They just kind of like end, and that's it. And so as a pedestrian, of course, you probably feel uncomfortable doing that. Um, you know, if you're walking in the grass already and that you don't have a curb, I mean, that doesn't make you feel safe as a, as a pedestrian, essentially. Um, we did want to mention that there is missed opportunity with the LEED certifications, you know, they could have made it a standard within the homes to um, be LEED certified, or at least include some other aspects such as solar panels on top of the roofs um, that could go for some heating or some simple powering or um, the, water, the water heater. Um, the amenity center is one thing that should definitely be constructed in the near future. Um, that is definitely a huge selling point for Mission Ranch and it has yet to be constructed. So right now that development, the build out, looks pretty slow. They've been building, this has been in the conceptualized since 2010. And so um, to see that amenity center would probably give it like a nice kickstart. Right now construction looks slow. There's just a couple of houses being built out there right now. Some of the lots don't even look purchased yet because they're still those um, mature or that, that nature from the original plot. And so Mission Branch, we just felt like, um, in conclusion, that there is some this uh, quadruple net value potential there. Although they did do a great job with the target demographic that they're going for, um, this is a college station area. We felt like um, density would have been important in an area like this. Of course, once again, they are going for that target demographic of single family owners. However, College Station is a city which, has, which is primarily filled with college students. And so the demand in that kind of single family residential is not quite that high. And on top of that, um, this is an upper middle class kind of neighborhood. Um, we find that if you consider Bryan as part of this statistical area, that these homes are quite expensive. Of course, there are many individuals who are able to afford this. This is a master plan community compared to other master plan communities. It's relatively small, um, so it is fitting for the size of College Station. 
but we feel like um, it was a missed economic opportunity. Had there been more density, there could have been um, some sort of business to be at least placed in there, and then on top of that, um, that would also be a creation of jobs. Furthermore, it's kind of age and class discriminatory or exclusionary because of that car-centric sort of design um, age, because as I mentioned before, if you're a child that's living in that little community and you wanted to go to the lake, you probably couldn't unless your mother was supervising you because there's no way for you to get there without a car. Um, and then, as well as class, because once again, thinking about this um, Bryan College Station as a statistical area, um, many individuals such as in Bryan would not be able to get here. And as we mentioned, this is the target demographic that they're going for. They're looking for that upper middle class quality, and so that is the culture that you're getting there. So I do feel like Mission Branch did bank on the culture very well, because um, essentially this is Aggieland, we're known for traditions, and so they're building upon that culture. Um, it's perfect, as I mentioned here at the bottom, perfect for one demographic. It is a small market, but we feel that this development was not ideal for College Station. However, that doesn't mean that this development is not a great development for the people that they are targeting. It's a great development for that target of single family homes, that upper middle class kind of demographic. It's great for that type of family. And that concludes our presentation.